Let's all stand this evening. I'll tell you, folks, I remember when we used to all just stand and welcome the presence of the Lord. Let's do that this evening. Let's just all stand and in our own voices, in our own way. Let's just welcome the Holy Spirit here this evening to be with us, and we'll worship Him. God, as we come to you this evening, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. God, for meeting here with us. Lord, we love the presence that we feel in this place. God, as we lift you up in this place this evening, God, we just ask that you'd make yourself real to us. Lord, as we seek your face today, God, if you'd come down in a special way, Lord, minister to each heart that's here. Lord, we know that we look to you, God, for the peace in this present world, in this time. God, there is no other place that we can find what we need but in you. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we glorify you. God, we lift you up. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now this first song, let's be, let it be our prayer this evening. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord, so that we might see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Thank you. 
and we praise you for all you do. Father, we we just especially thank you for your spirit and for blessing us this morning. And Father, we just ask that your spirit comes to us tonight, Lord, that you, as we open up our praise to you, Father, and as we study your word, that, Father, you would speak to us as only you can, Father. Lord, that you would encourage us, you would lift us up so that we could be about the business that you have for us, Lord. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you honor, glory, and praise for everything that you do. And we ask it all in the precious holy name of Jesus. Amen. this song is I've been awaiting you know a lot of these old songs didn't really mean too much to me when I was growing up I listened to the older folks sing a lot of them and I thought well you know but it really didn't hit home <laughs> but the older I get the more some of these songs it says that this song was written it says the last words of Granny Solomon oldest old woman on earth <laughs> who died in Dallas in January of 1940. But you know what? It just does me good to sing it once in a while and listen to it. Many years I've traveled on this weary road Watched the fleeting changes Tried to share some load Now my work is finished Steps mighty slow
shades of evening fall and steps again slow. I've been waiting, Lord, to go. Many years I've traveled on this weary road. Watch the fleeting changes, try to share some load. Now my work is finished, steps mighty slow. stand one more time I'm sorry <laughs> but folks I don't know I just can't do this song with everybody sitting down the title of it is standing standing on holy ground I don't know about you but I felt like I was standing on holy ground today let's just worship let's start off with that chorus Let's just reach out and claim it for 
we are standing on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Hallelujah. Wow. What a blessing we've had today already. And last week in our children's, our ch kids' crusade, uh, wow. Uh, what a great week in, in the Lord we've had. And it was such a good week. Our pastor's out of gas. <laughs> uh, oh, me. No. Um, let's continue to lift up our pastors as, as they have uh, had some sickness in their life. And uh, uh, we're just believing that before Wednesday night, they're going to be back and uh, jumping pews again. Or maybe not pews. We don't have those anymore, do we? I'm dating myself. But tonight, I, I want us to look at a, a, a little bit of Scripture tonight. And, and the title of, of the message tonight is Stand Firm. Uh, stand Firm. And, and as I was looking at this, I, 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 of course, I always have things in my mind different than most people, okay? I'm just a little different, all right, if y'all hadn't figured that out. But I started to title this message, Leaning Against the Rope. You know, when you rope something that don't want to be caught, or, or when you're really trying to do what you need to do and you're trying to hold your ground, you catch a cow or a calf or a horse or whatever and you're... A lot of times you'll take that rope and put it around you, around your back, okay? And that rope's coming here and you've got a hold of it here and that rope's around here and you've got a hold of it there. And, and I started to title it Leaning Against the Rope because you can hold a lot of weight when you lean back and you're holding on to that on both sides like that. And, and sometimes I feel like that in my Christian walk. I've got to just hang on, just get a hold of everything, anything you can get a hold of and hang on. And I believe that the more we do for God and the more we try and, and the more people we're reaching and, and wow, God has really done great things in, in just the last week in our church and in our children's church and, and through the kids crusade and and we've been able to minister to people even outside of our area here you know um, our backpacks we we sent some of the extra to another city in Oklahoma to bless them and I believe when we're doing those things that we've got to realize that we're going to have things come against us and, and I don't, I'm not going to say that this is a follow-up from this morning, but, but we, we quoted the scripture that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the devil and his unseen powers and things that, you know, it's kind of hard to fight against something that you can't see. But we have an advocate in the Father. We have an advocate that's willing to, when we go to him in prayer and when we ask him for his help and, and when we are willing to do what he's asked us to do and we're willing to be what he's asked us to be and we're willing to make the sacrifice to be righteous and holy, wow, he's willing to lift us up above our own abilities and tonight I'm going to go to the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. Cody and we're going to do verses 13 through 17. I get excited and my mind goes 14 different directions. And, and uh, I, I, I continually ask the Lord to put the thoughts in my head in some sort of an order that someone else besides me can understand. And uh, so I said that to say this, and I forget to tell Cody my scriptures. Every, every 
Sunday night and Wednesday night or, or whenever I'm speaking, and, and I know that helps him. You know what? God wants to use everybody in every way, and you may think your mind doesn't work right, and you may think things that you're doing are off the wall, and you may think that God can't use me, and that's a lie from the devil. Everybody in here has a gift. You may not even see it as a gift, but God wants to use each and every one of us in a way that will blow our mind. I, I look around sometimes and I think about all the things that I've been blessed to see. And, and, and you talk to other pastors and other people and, and I, I think of, of a story about uh, Brother Roger the Maddox was saying to us the other night when we were having supper together and he said, I just can't believe God used me in the way he has in Africa. You know? And I think, well, I can. But then you think and you, you look at your own life and, and here's why I mentioned that. Don't count God out. You say, well, Brother Kenny, I'm not, I've never counted him out. Have you not? I've had him ask me to do things and, and I'd think, wow, well, I can't do that. Y'all are awful quiet, acting more holy than me. But, but I'm saying he asked us to do things and we, we count ourselves out. So if you're counting yourself out, you're counting God out. Because he'll qualify you if you'll step out. Second, whoo, that's a rabbit trail. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Woo! I like to think he's talking about us. When he says beloved of the Lord, I know he's talking to someone else in that context, but if he put it in the Bible, it's for me. Beloved of the Lord. Because God hath from the beginning... <laughs> chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. And verse number 14 says, whereunto he called you, uh-oh, who is you? Every one of us. Every one of us. He's called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 15 says, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by the word or our epistle. And verse number 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope, through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I love you and I praise you. And I thank you, Lord, for the word you've given us to live by, that you've given us an instruction, Lord, that we would know what to do. And Lord, I just ask that as we study your word that you encourage us in that work. Lord, that you encourage us to be what you've called us to be. And Lord, that you would continue to bless us and lift us up and hold us in high regard as you do. Father, and as I try to preach this message, you know the, you know my thoughts, you know where my brain is and Lord I just ask that you take all these thoughts and arrange them in the way you would have them to be arranged and Lord I ask you to help us as we leave here to take what you've given us during this day and 
take it out to our mission field. And we'll be careful to give you honor, glory, and praise for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was reading through this, and today uh, I was reading back through, and and uh, even tonight in our prayer time, and if you're missing our prayer time, you're missing out. God's got things for you that you're missing out on. I, I mean, I don't know how to say it, but just I love you enough to say, and if you're on the Internet and, and you could possibly be here, but you're not, God's got things for you right here that you're going to miss out on if you're not here. So that's just a side note. But during our time of prayer, I was praying, and, and, and you know, I, I try to be honest with you so that not so you'll think I'm a bad person or that I'm, you'll see my inabilities, but I try to be honest with you in order to encourage you. And I prayed to God and I said, Lord, you know I'm troubled in my spirit because I don't know exactly where you want me to go. I don't know exactly what you want me to do tonight. And it's a few minutes till church time and, and you've asked me to bring a word from you to your people and I'm not sure what it is and I don't want to bring something that you don't want me to bring. But, but here's what God does. He gives us that peace. And he shows us where we're at and he shows us what to do. And, and, and I just believe there's somebody in here that feels like I can't do what God wants me to do. I believe there may be someone that will be watching online that'll say, well, I would like to be, you know what? God wants you to be. He wants you to be willing to say, I can't do that, but I tell you what I will do, I'll take the first step and let you help me. And, and I tell you what I will do, I'll be willing to do whatever you ask me to do if you'll show me. Wow. I believe how a assembly of God could turn this community upside down if we got a hold of the fact that we can't do it on our own and not only that but be willing to say I can't and I'm, but I'm going to step and then I want you to tell me what the next step is and then I'll be willing to do whatever it takes to be what you want me to be stand firm you say well how do you stand firm remember the teaching that we have. Most of us in this room have had a background of teaching, hopefully, godly biblical principles. Most of us have had a background of things that went on in, in, in the Word of God and we know what we're supposed to be doing. But sometimes... I just don't do it. Or we know what the Bible says, but are we willing to die to ourselves and let God use us? Remember our teaching. We've also, and, and, and when I was looking at that, I thought, ooh, how many, how many highlight some things in your Bible and then you'd like to white out other things? I thought that scripture was one of them because, because it said traditions. But when I was studying that, it meant what they were taught by example by Paul. What he had taught them by example and how to be and how to, how to obtain the things that he needed that they needed to obtain in Christ Jesus. And a lot of us can look back and think back on people in our lives that made such a big difference because of the lifestyle they lived. 
They lived a godly lifestyle. They were willing to die to themselves and they were willing to do what God wanted them to do. And that's the tradition we need to follow. To be willing to say, you know, I've saw this lived out and I am going to live it out myself. And now where the rubber meets the road, you know, I hold our younger people in high regard. I, I mean, I just do. You know, we got this group over here. Let me tell you, they're watching us. We got young couples in our church that need that example. There's more women in here than men, but men, I'm going to tell you, there's young men. that need to see godly men. And they need to see them being godly men in every aspect of their life. And they need that example. They need someone that's willing to pour into their life, that's willing to say, you know what, I'm going to put that extra time in. If I'm going to be able to speak to them and they're going to be able to see what a godly man is, they're they need to see it in me. They need to see it in us. Women, the women are no different. There's young ladies that need to know how to be a godly woman. And, and we're not going to make a big difference in their life until they know we love them. Until they know that we're willing to spend that little extra time. Go somewhere with them. Do something with them. Talk to them. Maybe even put her money where her mouth is. Maybe even be willing to say, you know, I want to help you in every way possible. But first and foremost, I'm going to make sure that you know I love you. First and foremost. And it's no different with us, men. We got to be willing to give of our time and of our efforts and all the things that God has given us. I can think back and, and I've talked about uh, even a pastor that I had that was willing to pour into my life when I was living ungodly. He didn't tell me, Kenny, you're, you're doing all these things wrong and, and you, you know, and bash me every day, but he encouraged me to be what God had called me to be. He was willing to spend the extra time and talk to me when I really didn't have time for him. Let me tell you, I wanted to run in church and punch my time card, and I didn't want no overtime. I wanted, as soon as that 12 o'clock whistle blew, I was ready to run. Now I'm telling you, I want it out of there. But he wasn't willing to let me do that. He wanted me to grow in Christ. And, and that's what we got to do. We got to uh, remember our teaching and be the person that is that someone will remember our teaching. The next thing that I get out of that is that I am chosen. I'd like for you to just say, I am chosen. The creator of the universe has chosen me and you. And not only has he chose us, but he puts enough trust in us that he wants to use us. This group of people in this room tonight, I don't, I don't think well, I know God's not going to show up like he did this morning in a simple choir practice for someone that he thinks he's wasting his time on. He's not going to show up in a service and bless us the way he does for a group of people that he don't think has potential. 
a lot of times in my life as riding horses, I'd ride one and I think this silly thing ain't ever going to make it. So I'm quitting him. God ain't quit us. He puts enough faith in this group of people to say, I believe they can turn their area upside down for my kingdom. Whew. Some of us ain't getting that. He wants us. He's chose me and he's chose you to turn this area upside down for his kingdom, to be the advocate for the unsaved, to help people to spend their eternity in heaven instead of in torment. Got off quiet in here. He's chose me. And he's chose you. And if you leave with nothing else, and I'm not done, but if you leave with nothing else, I'm not going to tell the preacher, Phil, and say I'm about done because I'm not. But if you leave here with nothing else, Leave here knowing that he's chose you. That he wants to use you. There's an alternative. He'll use somebody else if you choose not to allow yourself to be used. But I want to be that person and I hope you do too. And we got to hold on to what we've been taught. We've got to lean back on that rope and we've got to look in our Bible and I, my Bible tells me first and foremost I'm chosen and I'm going to lean back on that and I'm going to hang on tight. Whatever the devil sends, I'm going to be willing to say no matter what, where it is, what's going on or what's happening, I'm still going to praise and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm still going to realize that he's running after me. And I want you to realize that he's running after you too. And I'm going to be that person that slows down in order that he can catch me and help me. He can give me what I need in order for me to be what he's called me to be. And I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to be willing to say, you know what? Lord, you've chose me so I'm I'm going to hold on and I'm going to do what you've asked me to do. I'm going to hold on to what I was taught. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 now, verses 1 through 7. Boy, that Cody's slow when I don't tell him ahead of time. But God's chose him to do that. And God's chose me, but so you know what? He's going to equip us to be what he's called us to be. Finally, brethren, pray for us. Well, there's that word again. According to Bible Gateway, the word pray shows up in the Bible 508 times. According to Bible Gateway, I don't know. I haven't counted them, but that's what they say. 508 times. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable... Whoo! Boy, do we live in this world. Unreasonable reasonable and wicked men... And, and here's the part that I've always overlooked. For all men have not faith. Let me tell y'all a little secret. I, I mean, it's going to be inspirational. It's going to blow your mind, but everybody in the world ain't saved. And a lot of the goofball people we deal with 
Oh boy, that's maybe he can edit that out. But a lot of the people you deal with that you have trouble dealing with and a lot of the people that cause us strife and trouble, you know what their trouble is? It's not you and it's not me, but it's the lack of Jesus Christ in their heart. And they're looking for that. And you know what? God wants to use us to take that message to them. He wants to use me and you and our actions and how we approach that to reach them for his kingdom. For all men have not faith. And verse number three says, but, whew, that's my favorite word in the Bible. And, and I always, I love to say this. I love to say, but God, but God, how many times we see that in the, in the scripture when everything is going array and everything is out here and out there and, and all messed up. And, but the word of God said, but God, but the Lord, but God, but the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil? How in the world can we do the right thing? But the Lord is faithful. Boy, so many times, you know, we'll go through life and I remember as a child, about twice I said to my dad, I said, uh, well, the devil made me do that. Twice. And you're thinking that I'm going to say because my dad knocked me out, but he didn't. But let me tell you what my grandpa said. He said, son, God don't make you do anything. And he said, the devil don't either. But he said, you're still a kid. I thought I was an adult. I, I mean, I was 12, you know. That's a couple weeks ago, by the way. And, uh, but, but my grandpa said, the devil don't make you do anything either. It's your choice. And he said, if you, don't, if you use that as an, as an excuse again, he said, when you wake up after your grandpa knocks you out, you're going to realize it's your choice. Now, you got to understand, my grandpa was very, very easy going. And he, I don't know that he ever raised a hand to me, and I know that there was a lot of things that I didn't participate in that was wrong until after he passed away, and the reason I didn't, I did not want to disappoint him. But it, in that scripture we read this morning, if you go on down in 2 Samuel, Chapter 21, it, the lack of discipline that Eli gave his children is what got him in a tight spot. So I say all that to say this. The Lord will keep you from evil if you'll allow him. If you'll continue to make the right decisions and continue to do the right things and continue to seek him instead of what you want to do. Okay, I'm off that. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and to the patient waiting for Christ and the Lord directs your hearts into the love of God. Is anybody in this room besides me ever wanted to say something that the Holy Spirit said, whoop? Now I'm going to tell you the Holy Spirit shows up 
and I get excited. I've even been known to the little old Baptist boy has been known for the Lord to get a hold of me and me be undignified in the in the sight of the world. But the Holy Spirit don't only help you be blessed and speak in tongues and but he also tells me sometimes shut thy mouth. And he also tells me that sometimes that even that person I don't care that much about even being around to show them the love of Christ. He directed and I won't call which one but she's been a big part of my life and the Holy Spirit told her one time to give food to someone that was stealing from me. And I'll just be honest with you, I wanted to shoot him. But he was stealing. And the Holy Spirit directed her to give him food. And I'm not talking about candy bar, I'm talking about a ham. Y'all with me? The Holy Spirit will lead us and He'll direct our hearts into the love of God. One of my better friends now because of her obedience into the love of God. And sometimes the Holy Spirit directs me to be that word that's kind of naughty, that word that says patient. Whoo, that's hard for me. To wait on to wait on God to take care of things, to wait on on the Christ to be to do his work. You know, there's times even even in our witnessing that the Holy Spirit will say, I'm preparing them. And I want to say, okay, go ahead and prepare them, but I'm going to tell them ahead of time. You know, some of y'all are laughing, and I'm glad because that tells me that maybe you might have the same inclination. But here's the thing. We got to wait on Christ sometimes patient waiting for Christ. And verse number, I'm going to get off that. That's kind of convicting me. So verse number six says this, now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received us. So stop right there a minute. What is a brother? It's saved people. Withdraw ourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. Have you ever heard the saying birds of a feather flock together? Have you ever noticed that if there's something, I used to have a terrible bad mouth problem. I just, it was okay to me to talk nasty. Okay? God's delivered me from that. Praise Him. But still today, Years later, if I continue to hang out with someone that lets the dirty words fly, if I'm not real careful, first thing I know, I'm compromising just a little bit in what I say. And I'm compromising just a little bit in how I act. And I'm compromising... 
what God's put within me. And you are too if you allow yourself to be around that person over and over and over. Am I saying don't witness? No, I'm not saying that. Don't leave here and say, Brother Kenny said stay away from them. I'm just saying don't dwell with them. Tell them what God tells you to tell them. But get away from them when the Spirit tells you to get away from them. Don't let them rub off on you. When they start rubbing off on you, you need to get away. You need to be rubbing off on them more than they are on you. But withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly. And I look at that and I think, okay, Lord, where do you draw the line where, where he tells you to? And then on the flip side of that, God forbid that I'm the brother that's walking disorderly. We can be that person that compromises someone else's spirituality. We can be that person that they need to withdraw from. Don't be the person that they need to withdraw from. Be that person that they need to come to to do better. Be that person that is the one that encourages and lifts up and, and helps, not the person that drags someone else down. Deliver yourself from there. Unreasonable, wicked. You say, whoa, that sounds tough. Wow. If we're not careful, we can be that unreasonable, wicked person. And that's not what God has for us. And verse number seven. For yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Another, just another, just another warning sign. Follow the examples of godly men and women according to Scripture. Follow the examples. Be around the people that lift you up. Be around someone that helps you. And young people, let me tell you this. If you're not married, when you decide to get married or when you decide to even date someone, Date someone that lifts you up spiritually, not someone that drags you down. Date someone that's going to help you in your walk with Christ instead of pull you backwards. Adults, even our friends, spend our time with people that helps us to walk more closely to God. You know, I've got friends that, and, and <laughs> I hope, well, I hope they're all, I hope they all get on our YouTube and, and hear the Word of God. But I hope none of them think I'm talking about them, but I've got friends that I love them. And they're fun to be around, but I can't be around them that much. Because they'll drag me down if I'm not careful. Hang out with people that's going to make you a better Christian instead of drag you down. And then verses 8 through 13, I'm going to read them. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. And verse number 10. And for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, 
that if any would not work, neither should he eat. In verse number 11, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. I'm going to stop right there just a minute. If I am busy enough with the things of God, I'm not going to be minding Brother Coy's business. And I'm not going to be talking about him because I'm going to be busy at the work that God's called me to do. And I'm also going to say this, that idle or idle time. You say, well, what is idle time sitting doing? Nothing. Being lazy. causes us to stumble. I don't know about y'all, but if I'm sitting around and, and doing nothing, my mind goes wild. I'm thinking of all the bad things and all the things that I need to be away from. Working not at all, but our busy bodies. I'm going to go on verse number 12. <laughs> Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. And verse number 13 says this. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. We should never be tired of doing the things of God. We should never give ourselves enough free time to mind other people's business. We should never give us ourselves enough free time to get into trouble. I'm going to say that again. I sure wanted to get an amen from some parents, but we should never provide so much for our children that they're not busy working. I, I remember yeah, he won't mind. I remember one time feeling guilty about old Josh and I'd had some people say things, you know, because we worked all the time. And we did. We was always doing something. There's always something to do around the farm, okay? And one Saturday I said, okay, today we're going to take the whole day off. And y'all don't look like that's a big deal. But, I, you know, it was for us. I said, we're going to take the whole day off. We're not going to do nothing. I'm going to sit in the house. We're going to drink coffee till way up in the morning, 7.30, 8 o'clock, you know. And we're going to do all these things that normal people do. And we may even go to town and goof around and go shopping or something after a while. Well, I sat around and drank coffee till about seven and uh, just went on out and doing my own thing. And he come out of the house and I wasn't paying much attention because we wasn't going to work or do nothing. We'd already established that. And I went back in the house to do something and I started smelling propane. Oh, wow, I smell propane. I went to checking around at the gas heaters and all that stuff, and I walked out the back door, and I really smelled propane. And he was about 12 or 13 and 12, probably 11 or 12. And he took a shovel and was digging in the yard. He didn't even know why he was digging in the yard. 
and he'd cut the copper pipe that come from the propane tank to the house. And there was about probably 100 gallons of propane flying through there. And I looked at that, and, and we've laughed about it, and we joke about it, and we make fun of it. But the idleness was not good for us. Now, maybe you can be idle and not do anything and be okay. But I know I can't. So, but it says here, be not weary in well-doing. And sometimes we get to doing so many things that we overwhelm ourselves. And then we get weary in helping people. And I've been in ministry situations before, and I'm not saying this to say woe is me, but I'm just making a point that I've been in ministry situations to a point that when someone came to me with a problem that I was so weary and well-doing that I really didn't even want to talk to them. We don't need to get to that point. But we need to be busy about the things of God. We need to be willing to say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. Whatever you need me to do, I'm willing to do it. Whatever you have for me, I want to be found faithful. We can always help others. And we can always work to bless others. I know, I, I, and, and I'm about to quit, okay, really. I know people that work really hard at really good jobs and are very successful and the reason that they are is they do that to bless others. They're willing to put that gain for the kingdom of God. They're willing to say, okay, Lord, you've given me an ability and I'm gonna use it for your kingdom. You may say, well, that's not me if it's not you. He's given you abilities for you to bless others. He's given each and every one of us abilities to reach others for the kingdom. And my question to us tonight is this. I'm not going to have an altar call. I'm not going to ask you to come pray. I'm not going to ask you to do that. But I am going to ask you to do some soul searching tonight. What has God given you that you're not using? Are you a good steward with the things God's blessed you with? What's God asking you to do that you're not doing? What's God asking me to do that I'm not doing? Believe me, I've been doing some soul searching and there's some things that I'm going to have to do better at. Because there's some things that God has asked me to do that the devil's put on the back burner. I'd like to blame it on him, but it's really the fact that I've just put it in the back of my mind so that I don't step up and be what he's called me to be. Oh, I've got a bunch of excuses, Sister Verda. Well, it's because I... Y'all with me? But who have I missed? getting to share the gospel with because of my laziness. Who have you missed getting to share the gospel with? Maybe not even because of your laziness, but because you talked yourself out of being what God's called you to be. My challenge for us tonight is to leave here knowing that you are chosen. But not only that, but to leave here tonight encouraged to step up our game and be what God's called us to be. Be the church. Not just 
come to church, but be the church. Father, I love you and I praise you. Father, I ask that tonight that you encourage us to be what you've called us to be, that you encourage us to step out, that you encourage us, Lord, to see ourselves as you see us. And Lord, where we do have that feeling of inadequacy, Lord, that you would give us help, that you would make the step that when we do make the step that you will equip us for the next one. And when we take that step, Lord, that you'll equip us for the next one. And Lord, help us to just walk blindly toward you, to, to walk toward you in a way that we're willing to do whatever, whenever, however that you ask us to do it. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you honor, glory, and praise. And Lord, as we leave here, I ask you to touch each one of us to remind us, Lord, that as we go through this week that you've chosen us and you've called us to do things for your kingdom. Help us to be ever mindful of that. And Lord, also in our time with you that you show us without a doubt what we need, where we need to start and help us to start right there. And we'll be careful to give you honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I know this has been a little different as far as altar time. If you feel the need to pray, I invite you to come pray. If you feel the need to come and spend time with God, I want you to definitely do that. But I do encourage you as we leave to be willing to hear from God and realize He needs us to be obedient to further His kingdom. See you all Wednesday night, each and every one of you.